All right. Uh, thank you guys for stopping by. Today we're going to be talking about the soft life. Yes, I may come across like I'm going in on y'all, and it probably is because I am. Uh, when it comes to this soft life trope, and yes, it is a trope now, I do believe that there's a lot of misunderstanding about what it means in society and what it means for women that look like me. I mean, African American or Black American women, okay? A lot of times in uh, our lives, we tend to have a trauma response or some kind of stress response to our current life situation. So we're looking for ways to really get off scot-free and free and clear and easy. And that is what I think soft life is. Now, I have my reasons for thinking that. So we're going to talk about that on tonight's live stream. Now, it's been a minute, y'all. I've been gone. Yes. Now, I can't promise how many live streams you're going to get from me, but at least we got one today before the new year, right? Um, mainly, the reason that I've been gone is because a lot of y'all have been keeping me in my office on the phone. That's right. You guys have been booking consultations and I want to thank you for that. I think that YouTube is pushing out some of my content, like specific videos. And I also think that you guys have gotten in touch with me because you have found me on other people's social media platforms having live streams. So however you found me, I appreciate you. Now, of course, you see our new website here. This is mycreditcall.com because we are focusing not only on credit repair going into 2023, we are going to be focusing on really getting down in the trenches with you and having conversations about your economic future, okay? Your personal economy matters, especially with the way that things are going now, okay? Groceries are up like 10% or more um, than this time last year. Another reason why I don't think soft life is really going to be beneficial or even realistic for certain people in society. So let me go ahead and just take you over to the website really quick uh, so you guys can kind of know everything that we're going to be talking about. Um, and I'm also, you know, showing you or filming from the log cabin. So my setup is a little bit different. So you got to forgive me, y'all. Now, uh, we have 30 minute, 60 minute and 15 minute consultations. And we also have a special package for four one hour session. So that means in a 30 day period, you literally have four one hour calls with me where you can discuss whatever the hell you want to talk about. Okay. If it's a business idea that you have, if you need some resources, if you want to work on your budget, if you need to know how much more money you need to make this year to get exactly where you need to go next year, that's going to be something that you want to do. You can also do it in one of the other options that we have here, but I'm going to tell you a lot of people they book the 30 minute and then they end up booking an hour after that call is over. So um, for those of you that have that issue, I mean, you know, you want to get a lot out and you need somebody to talk to, to look at things from their perspective, uh, because it really does help to talk to somebody and get outside information. Um, you need to go ahead and book. Okay. So go over to mycreditcall.com. All right. Shameless plug. We are done with that. Now, when it comes to the end of the year, we want to start thinking about what is going on with us mentally, subconsciously. Uh, what are some things that are stressors in our lives? And what are some things that we want to leave in 2022 and take into 2023 with us? And we also want to think about what are the things that we want to culminate and, you know, create and cultivate in the year 2023, okay? There's a whole bit of history around why January is the day that you want to do it. We're going to talk about that in another live stream. Now, soft life. I have to come for y'all because I really think that this uh, particular lifestyle is going to be a major disservice to women that look like me, as I said. Now, I'm not really worried about other groups of women for the purposes of this video because I do believe on the whole, that there are way too many definitions of what soft life actually is, which means it's open to interpretation. And that means that there are many areas where we're going to get it wrong. Okay. Now, the basic idea of soft life is we want to sit, we want to chill, we want to pull away from society, and we basically want to take mental health days. We want to get manicures and pedicures. Um, we want to not necessarily be the gatekeeper of all of our family and friends' issues and problems and all that good stuff. We just want to we want a vacation. We want to have nice things, drink champagne. Okay, whatever. You can already tell a lot of those things that I mentioned are diametrically opposed, okay, because there's no way that we can sit down with the soft life and then also fund our lifestyle style, which brings me to the first point that I want to make tonight when it comes to the soft life. A lot of you have no idea where the soft life actually originated from. If you look on the internet, it's actually pretty difficult to figure it out. But after doing some digging, I came up with 
a a pretty reasonable like origin story of the soft life, chilling, sitting down, letting everything just kind of fall where it's going to fall. It comes from sugaring. Yes, the sugar daddy, sugar baby phenomenon. That is where uh, soft life has actually derived from. Now, there was a young lady, I believe she's actually out in the UK, and she did a report or a book or something like that where she wanted to uh, study the dynamic between men that were paying for women's lifestyles. And uh, they call them blessies and blessers, okay, that you can tell this is definitely something from the UK. Now, this already in and of itself is something that as Americans, we need to go ahead and separate ourselves from because their economy is way different. Their structure and government is way different. Um, the way that they live their lives is way different. The ethnic makeup of the people there is completely different. So they already are coming in with a whole different perspective than we have as Americans on what soft lifing is. Now back to the sugar baby, sugar daddy thing. So this is really where it comes from. Now, if you understand the origins of it, then it really does start to make sense as far as why I think that it is bullshit for a single woman in the United States of America, especially right now in this economy, to dial in and adopt this particular lifestyle. The other thing that I need you all to understand is that when we talk about soft life, where's the first place you probably heard about it? online. You heard about it on this nifty little black screen that you have, and then you took it and decided to run with it. That's a very big issue that we have in this group. And by group, I mean Black people. Yes, we are going to be talking about that. Now, uh, a lot of this has happened because um, we have a particular subconscious like way of thinking that I think is across the board and all we're kind of connected like a daisy chain for lack of a better term. It's only when we start to really look into that, that we can make some changes and figure things out, right? Because there is a reason on the whole that you want to back up and have a soft life. It's mainly because you're probably stressed and you're overworked and you're doing too much in the first place. Essentially, you bit off more than you can chew. OK, so now we're taking on soft life where we're pulling out of society. We're going and sitting down. We're going and having spa days, alone time and all these other things, not realizing that in doing so, we are now effectively walking away or turning a blind eye to all of our responsibilities that we actually need to have laser line focus on. And we need to be eliminating those issues right now. OK, I feel like I'm kind of going on and on here, but there's a reason that I'm saying this. So um, before we get started, if I haven't even said it, you guys go ahead and share the content with somebody that you think can benefit from it. And if you're living soft life and disagree with anything I'm about to say tonight, leave a comment, okay? Put it in uh, the comment tab there, whatever it is, okay? Uh, now, I'm going to show you something that was really interesting that I came across that talked about soft life as kind of a brief explanation of what it is. Let me see if I can do my own technical stuff here and show you guys some stuff because I want you to know or I want you to see certain aspects of it that I don't think you even relate to. So I think you need to let it go. Now, all right, this article I found, uh, let's see if we can change the view here because I went ahead and saved it, but I want to show y'all give you the full screen experience. All right. So this right here is the first reason that I think that soft life is bullshit. Let me go ahead and get myself situated here. All right. Because first of all, it has a hashtag, which means a lot of people aren't even really living this life, y'all. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. We're not going to talk about that right now. Uh, so this article is by a young woman, I believe, named Channing Hargrove. And this is pretty recent. OK, this is September of 2022. And she talks about why soft life isn't as easy as it appears online. I wholeheartedly agree with her, which is the basis of why we're doing this live stream tonight. Now, uh, she talks about clicking on any several thousand videos under the soft life hashtag on TikTok and you'll see black women. That's very important. OK, black women panning their cameras to show vacations in tropical locales, uh, fine dining at upscale establishments, expensive clothing and expensive closets, their well-manicured hands on steering wheels of a Mercedes Benz, clinking champagne flutes on boats with girlfriends. Now, let's go back to the um, 
the sugar baby thing that we talked about. When you read this description by itself with that hashtag, uh, you know, drinking on boats with your friends, driving Mercedes Benzes, you know, panning cameras and showing where you're traveling. Okay. To me, that does sound a little bit like sugaring. Now, I'm not saying that everybody that does this is a sugar baby. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that there are close parallels here that you all need to pay attention to. Now, the term soft life, it says, originated in the Nigerian influencer community. All right, that's already letting you know maybe Americans shouldn't be looking at this, but okay. Um, the Nigerian influencer community as slang for living a life of comfort and low stress. That is the part that makes soft life content, content so inspiring. The chance to imagine what life can feel like apart from the realities of Black women's labor. Now, the the other part I wanted you to notice and why I highlighted this little sentence right here is that this comes from, or in this article, they talk to lifestyle influencers. Okay. That's already the first red flag that we have here. Now we're going to come back to this in a second, but the fact that soft life is being promoted by influencers already lets you know something is up here, okay? Because anytime a social media influencer is telling me to do something or promoting a lifestyle, well, there's usually some links in their description and there's usually something that they are promoting, okay? A lifestyle influencer is literally just that. They are put there to influence you into going a certain way. Now, of course, if you are uh, sitting on your butt, not going to work and you know just taking time off and doing whatever you do and leaving the workforce, I'm not really sure how you're actually going to uh, support this type of lifestyle, right? Now, the article kind of goes on to talk about some things that I think are pretty pertinent here, and I'm going to scan through to uh, see if I can find it because I wasn't able to highlight everything. But the fact that this person is a social media influencer and has a very large following is a little bit disturbing, okay? Now, let's go up here. There is a lady that they talk about that all she did, she showed herself on TikTok doing a skincare routine in front of a mirror. She was watering her plants. She put marshmallows in a hot beverage and she was drizzling honey on her granola in her fruit breakfast. This is highly unremarkable stuff, but because because we are this starved for um, attention or we maybe believe that this life is very like just luscious and beautiful. Um, it says that the post got 600,000 likes, 3,000 comments and was bookmarked more than 40,000 times. Now to me, this is more of a symptom of people that maybe are not conducting their lives properly, okay? You have some reevaluation that you might need to do with your life as a whole, all right? Now, there's a couple of other things that are going on in this article that I'm not really going to um, get too far into, but there's a couple of important things I want you to know about the people that are being interviewed in this particular article. Number one, these are women that are college educated. Number two, these are women that have made substantial sums of money before committing to the soft life. Number three, they're influencers and they is self-admittedly say that their social media is dictated towards selling products and hustling and being entrepreneurs, okay? So is that soft life really soft is my question, okay? So let me go ahead and jump into my outline and see if I can stay on task. So when it comes to this lifestyle, I need you to consider the source. What does this person's life actually look like? You know how we talked about it comes from looking at the little screen, okay? And you get, okay. Actually, let's do this because I think <laughs> I want to make sure y'all really understand what I'm saying. Do you understand how small this screen really is in the grand scheme of things? Really, just hold it out in front of you and look at the perspective, how small this is compared to everything that you can actually see in front of you right now. There's nothing stopping me from just showing you and panning into one little thing that looks extra cool um, that I think may spark some jealousy in you or may pique your interest. It is not hard to do that, okay? It's not hard to go over to a Mercedes dealership and sit in a car and take a picture with my hand on the steering wheel and walk away or catch an Uber or get into my Honda Civic and drive away. Okay, it's not hard. Um, so that's the thing that I kind of want to drive home here because I think we're missing the point of what soft life is appearing to be. And then maybe let's just backtrack and figure out why we actually ended up here to where we want to live a soft life. I think that's more important than the actual act of going into the soft life. 
a lot of times when we have these responses um, of just retreating, uh, like I said, it is trauma because at the end of the day, what is it in psychology where they say when you're in a dangerous situation, it's fight, flight, or freeze. I want to say that soft life is literally flight and it's also freezing, okay, because you don't know what to do. Instead of fighting your circumstances, you're choosing to retreat, okay? Now, there's nothing wrong with going to get a facial. We're not saying that that's an issue. But if we're going to get a facial that costs $140 versus paying off some of our student loan debt, which is tens of thousands of dollars that we're going to talk about a little later, I think you're going to understand exactly the point that I'm trying to make, okay? If not picking up your phone is a stress response because you have friends that continuously want to talk to you about drama and you're always, you know, consoling your girlfriends or your family members. You're always the one that they come to. How about this? Instead of retreating and saying, I need time off and I need to go, you know, dedicate myself to soft life. Why not evaluate those people that are in your friendship and your family circle? Because sis, at the end of the day, if they're all coming to you, it's because you're making yourself available and it's because you don't know how to actually, you know, dictate and carve out your time and you actually, um, you struggle with boundaries. So it's, you know, so learning boundaries is not going to be about retreating and not picking up your phone. It's going to be about actually coming out and communicating and shifting some of the personal um relationships that you have in your life and establishing those boundaries with those people verbally. You can't do that in the soft life because the soft life is all about retreating, okay, in the under the guise of self-care, okay, because there's nothing soft about life, particularly in the African-American community because we are the most single demographic out there. So why would we purposely do other things that will pull us out of the societal cloth and put us into a corner where we can't really have support or we're taking, like like I said, a ton of self-help days. Anyway, I understand some of y'all are not going to understand where I'm coming from and that's okay. But at the end of the day, if you find yourself having to subscribe to the soft life lifestyle, it's because you have gotten, you've lost control of your life. Okay. And, um, Interestingly enough, the reason that I this is sticking out to me or standing out to me is because when I have talked to a couple of people over the last week, women, okay, black women that I've talked to during our consultations at mycriticall.com, you would think that these were women that really had everything together based on how they look on the surface. They are put together. These sisters are fine, okay? But when we look at what's beneath the surface, these are beautiful, lovely people mentally, and, you know, they have great hearts and things like that. However, you would be surprised at how much of your personality I can ascertain and figure out just by looking at your credit report. Because the one thing that we do when I talk to you is I ask you, what is your goal? All right, tell me what your goal is. We'll table that. Now let's work backwards. Let's look at your past as well right? Because we can't fix the future without looking at the past. And then we can't really put together what's going on in the present if we don't acknowledge what is already there. A lot of what I see on these credit reports, particularly with women, is lifestyle creep, is mingling, um, mistaking credit for income, okay? Um, I see a lot of credit being run up because we want to live soft life where we're taking vacations and we're charging them. And because it's out of sight, out of mind, we're only thinking about the minimum payment on that credit card, right? So I can learn a lot about a person. A lot of credit gets run up from trying to keep up with the Joneses, trying to keep up with hashtag soft life. That's what a lot of that is. A lot of these soft life people are not living the way that, you know, you think that they are, okay? That, if I haven't said it enough, that's really what we're getting at here. Now, like I said, it's not hard to go rent a car and say that it's yours. It's also not hard to, you know, fly to, I don't know, does does Frontier go to the Bahamas? I don't know. But it's not hard to book a flight on a janky airline and then go, you know, to the next country over from uh, Florida and, you know, post pictures, okay? A week in the Bahamas probably costs a good $500. That's about it. Okay, if you really just want to have some regular fun, smoke some pot, do what you do, right? It doesn't cost a lot. So I think what we're not really paying attention to is that 
um, with this particular lifestyle, a lot of this is smoke and mirrors. Okay. And I learned that because I look at finances. I tell you all that all the time. Based on what I see on your credit report, the more questions that I ask you, the more I'm uncovering who you are as a person, what you consider important, right? Now, let's not even talk about all the student loan debt that I see either. If you have student loan debt, you're not, you can't live the soft life right now. So again, I'm talking to, I'm talking to black women on this one. All right. The main reason um, is because we carry the most student loan debt in this country. I think it's very interesting that uh, black women want to live a soft life, yet a lot of things that you've done in your life don't really symbolize that. Uh, going to college and getting a bachelor's degree or a master's or a doctorate is not a symbol of someone that wants to go sit down somewhere. It's a symbol of somebody that's a, a ridiculously high achiever. And so much so that you hold, you really do value hard work because at the end of the day, you're going to have to work five times as hard as you did getting that degree to pay off that degree. So you can't live soft life, sister. You're going to have to actually get up and work. Okay. That's what I'm getting at right now. All right. Because if you do this soft life thing, you're actually probably going to have to uh, dial it down a little bit and go into a lifestyle that is not particularly promoted. And it's sometimes, um, made fun of by African-American women. So I'm going to dive into what I'm trying to say there in a minute. Now, um, with a lot of the girls that we're seeing here, let's talk about one of the obvious things. If they're not sugar babies, a lot of these women that are sitting down and doing nothing made really good money before they did that. Okay. They're taking a hiatus. They're going back to work. Okay. They're not, they're not exiting the job market forever. Okay. It's very rare that a single woman is going to ever be able to do that. The second thing <clears throat> to piggyback off of what I just said is that they're married or there's more than one income in the home. See, you're looking through that little screen and you're thinking that they're soft life in it all by themselves. They're just cosmopolitan women in the city. No, the hell they're not. OK, you don't know what they're doing. Do you know women sell underwear in jars? They sell they pass gas in jars and they sell that stuff. A lot of these soft lifers you're looking at have really weird things that they uh, they have weird economies that they have participated in. OK, you'd be very surprised. Um, because it takes a lot to be able to afford that particular lifestyle, right? It takes a lot. And uh, you guys may think we're, we're doing a lot of assuming here, but no, I'm going to show you some of the stats as far as um, where we stand as African-American women in America, okay? Um, so we already talked about how uh, we're not really seeing this from a, a clear perspective. We're not looking at the background of the people that are promoting this lifestyle. And we're also not looking at how this lifestyle fits into our current lifestyle. Does my past actions and my present circumstances, can I actually jump into a life of pulling back um, right now? And I'm going to venture to say half of y'all can't. Actually, I'm going to say 70% 70, 70 of y'all probably can't. Now, the reason that a lot of us subscribe to this is because of a little thing called groupthink. Now let's really talk about what groupthink actually is because I, I want to get clear um, because we suffer from this in this particular community. Again, when I say the community, I mean Black people. I shouldn't have to put an asterisk on this all the time, but you, you already know. So let's talk about groupthink and why this is going to be so detrimental to our community. So what is groupthink? What are the characteristics and what are the causes? Now, now, the reason a lot of you are going for soft life is because of groupthink. You think because a group over here is doing it that you now have to subscribe to it. Groupthink is a phenomenon that occurs when a group of individuals reaches a consensus without critical reasoning or evaluation of the consequences or alternatives. I don't know about y'all, but this sounds a whole lot like American Black people. Groupthink is based on a common desire not to upset the balance of a group of people. This desire creates a dynamic within a group whereby creativity and individuality tend to be stifled in order to avoid conflict, okay? Now, the reason I say this is because a lot of the reason, again, that we want to do soft life is because we have made some really critically erroneous choices going into our adult life, our young adult life, that caused us to now be burned out 
before we turn age 30, okay? So what do I mean by this? Just, let's just say student loans, okay? Now we know the most common debt that's owed in the country is actually mortgage debt, but so let me just go ahead and show you guys where we measure up in this particular grand scheme of things, all right? Um, Cause I'm trying to really drive home why soft life is a scam <laughs> and why you cannot afford to subscribe to it, okay? If you're thinking about soft life, you better book a consultation and come talk to me because I'm going to talk your ass out of it. All right. I hope my audio is okay too, y'all. Um, and I'm not checking out the chat. I don't even know if you guys are chatting. Um, okay. So when it comes to student loan debt, Black students take out the most student loan debt for a bachelor's degree, followed by white students. Okay. So um, I know you guys feel like you want to do better than white people. Well, here you go. Okay. You're taking out more debt uh, than white people to actually go to school. Okay. So we are winning somewhere, <laughs> but are we really? Now, Black borrowers can carry a median student loan debt balance of $30,000. So if that's the median, then we already know that the median is really just the mean between two extremes, right? So a lot of us are taking out way more debt, okay? Now, 90% of Black students take out student loan debts to pay for college compared to 66% of our white students. Now, listen, again, like I said, we're winning, y'all. You guys want equality? I mean, hey, you're winning. We're winning right here, okay? Uh, four years after graduate, after graduating, Black students hold almost as twice as much student debt as their white peers, largely due to differences in accrual and graduate school borrowing. Now, um, because a lot of us tend to come from single parent households, uh, this is part of the reason that a lot of us need money to go to school in the first place. Now, out of women, undergraduate borrowers, the average Black woman carries the most student debt, averaging $41,466.05 one year after graduation. All right. Now tell me if we're coming out of school with over $41,000 in debt on average, this is African-American women, where the hell are you going to be able to make time to sit down somewhere and chill out for a whole year? How are you paying for this? How are you paying for that? Your rent, your car note, your food, because food has gone up. We know that groceries have gone up, what, 10% or more uh, this year between now, you know, now and the beginning of the year, and it's going to stand to increase. We, we know this, right? The cost of doing business everywhere, the cost of just living has increased exponentially. It's even now to where it costs more to actually eat at home than it does to eat out, right? So, Again, if you're already coming out of school with exponentially more debt than all of your counterparts, okay, this is men and women, Black women come out with the most debt out of everybody, okay? Where is your soft life? You already made a choice when you were 18 years old that was going to extend your work life. Okay, you might not have known that's what you were doing, but that's what you've been doing. So essentially backing up and not taking care of that responsibility, it, you know, in, in interest of doing the soft life. Okay, sis, go ahead and do that. I will see you on a consultation at mycreditcall.com where I'm going to sit there and tell you the exact same thing. Okay. So I want you guys to pay attention uh, to what we're talking about here, because there really are a lot of mistakes that we have made um, where... This is why I believe that soft life and retreating from life is a trauma response. It's a stress response, okay? Um, because realistically, most of us need to make more money, right? Now, let's talk about these content creators. I have a question for you. When you look at this lifestyle, when you look at, you know, the five-second clips or 10-second clips on TikTok, how does your life actually measure up to that? You know, how, how, how does your, how is your life compared to these women? Those of you that want to sit down and shut up, do you already have your year of emergency money, your FU money, as they call it? Do you have that already? Do you have your retirement account set up, right? Are we just relying on the 401k at the job? Do we also have an additional Roth IRA on the side? These are just little things I'm throwing out there. Do you have that? Are you maxing that out every year? Because if you're not, this one to two years that you're sitting out doing the soft life is going to exponentially push you back. We have a very bad habit in this community of making decisions and doing things that are going to 
eventually have a sitting. Well, we're not going to be sitting down. We're going to be laying down somewhere <laughs> because you already know. Honestly, we have a lot of health issues too. We have, you know, thyroid issues. We have, um, you know, uh, the, what is it? The cystic ovaries. We have all kinds of weird stuff that goes on with us because we have taken on way too much on the offset of our life, like on the onset of our adult life. Uh, pardon me. We literally set ourselves up to be work mules for the rest of our lives. And then we wait for something like this to come along that gives us permission to go sit down again you cannot sit down. You don't have that kind of time. I'll never forget. I had a life coach once and, or maybe, I don't know what she considered herself, but I would call her a life coach. And she's really, she's really awesome. We were sitting in her office one day and I, you know, was, was telling her it was right when I started my business and all kinds of stuff. And, um, you know, I, I know my age, if you know me personally, you know how old I am, but this lady looked me dead in my face and she said, Hey, Victoria, if you want to get here, Based on your age, based on your background and where you have come from, she said, you got to hit the ground like this. And she took her little cute heels and she just went like this on the floor. She said, you got to hit the ground like this. She said, you don't get time to really sit down and think about, um, you know, uh, moving slow. She said, you don't really get to move slow. She said, but that's on you because you decided to do X, Y, Z with your life. She said, that's, that's, that's why you can't sit down. She said, you got to hit the ground running and, and stop playing. I didn't look at her and argue with her and say, but, 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 life coach, but, but, no, I didn't do that. I said, okay, you know what? Sis is right. She's right. I can't afford to just sit somewhere and just be like, oh, okay, I think, I guess I'll do that today. No, I didn't even go to college. I don't even have that kind of debt. And I know that I can't sit down and live a soft life 100%. I can't take a year off and just do nothing. It's not going to work because little do you all know, while the soft life is being promoted to single women, guess what? Being single is actually exponentially more expensive than it is being partnered up with a husband. Men that are married make more money, which means they are giving you more of an opportunity to sit down and live the soft life. However, the soft life, again, promotes being by yourself. It promotes going off and having time alone, and it promotes Xing out like 90% of your relationships, okay? Um, and okay, I'm exaggerating. It's not 90% of your relationships, um, but they don't, and I'm sorry, y'all, I keep kicking my camera, um, but they really promote like uh, voluntarily ostracizing yourself from the community, which is not something that we need to be doing right now. Now, let's talk about why I also think that the soft life is obvi is also a derivative of like uh, quiet quitting. Now, quiet quitting is just going to work, kind of doing what you want to do or not doing what you want to do, but doing what's in your job description and then calling it a day. There's, a, there's an issue here because I think instead of looking at soft life, we need to be looking at some opportunities here because there is an influx or this, you know, um, culture. Oh, shoot. Sorry, y'all. That was a gnat. <laughs> um, OK, since there's a culture of going to work and doing the bare minimum. Instead of trying to like jump on that bandwagon as American black women, what we need to be doing is looking to see how we can benefit from that. It's really not going to benefit you going into your job every day doing the bare minimum because they are paying attention to you. They are doing the metrics right now. In the background, they're looking at your keystrokes. They're looking at how often you're online. They're looking at what is your productivity. They're looking at all the sick days that you're taking, the vacation time you're taking. They're looking at your social media and they see you. They see you and they're going to be looking at you and they're going to be assessing whether or not you are economically viable for that company. So soft life do it if you want to. But I'm saying, let's look at it from a different perspective. If we know that there are people of a certain age, and it's, it's typically older Gen Z and older millennials. So it's kind of in that in that time frame of like maybe 30 something, 26, 27 uh, to about 40. Okay. These are the people that are going into work and they're quietly quitting. Now, we also know that there are 7 million men that are voluntarily leaving the workforce, some of them involuntarily, because I, I do think that the numbers are not being completely honest with what's happening. But if we have a ton of men coming out of the workforce as well, 
in certain instances, you might actually benefit from this. Anytime there's a whole bunch of people doing a mass exodus of something, I honestly think that it could be a moment in time for Black people, men and women to actually benefit from that. Because if there are certain positions that people are just walking away from, guess what? It now opens up a vacancy that you could fill. So instead of going and getting that white manicure and that white pedicure and putting it on social media, you need to be updating your resume. Call Mentor Shelly. She's on the website or on my live streams all the time. Contact Mentor Shelly. Okay, get your resume lined up. While these 7 million men are taking themselves out of the workforce, you go ahead and slide right up in there, sis. Okay, now I'm not saying go be a plumber. We're talking about C-suite executive jobs. We're talking about, um, you know, going into tech. Do, do what you do. But don't let the hype of doing less work seduce you into poverty. And I think that that is what is about to happen for a lot of you, Okay. The other thing I want you to think about is after you've done all this, going to college, taking care of your household, a lot of y'all are single mothers. I don't have kids, so forgive me if I sound like I'm coming for you. But a lot of you have made decisions where there's a lot of strife and stress and overworking in your life. Would you really be able to go and sit down somewhere? I don't think you would. Case in point, I love my mother to death, but I always tease her about this. My mother is a, I want to say she's a baby boomer um, because yeah, she's in her 60s. So my mom is a baby boomer. My mom has not worked since she was somewhere in her 50s, right? Um, She kind of had a pseudo retirement. It wasn't an official retirement, but the way that her life worked out was that she left at the right time, she got married, and now she doesn't do anything. She takes care of her husband and she's now just pursuing a bachelor's degree just because, just because she kicks back at her house. They travel, they get massages. She's, she's always on Facebook telling us how she got burned with rocks, all that kind of stuff (laughs) because of the hot, the hot massages or whatever they do. But it took her a very long time to adjust to that lifestyle. And, and I'm a worker. I, I work, right. But I used to just sit and like tell her sometimes like, mom, sit down. It's okay. Chill. Okay. That is how you do soft life, right? You do soft life when the conditions of your life call for it. I have a sneaking suspicion that with this, this, you know, the 600 like the 600,000 likes that this girl got on her Mercedes post, I have a strong feeling that all 600,000 of those people are not in a position to live a soft life. She's not even in a position to live a soft life because she admits further down in the article, she works. She posts links. She has to keep the content coming because if she doesn't, she won't make any money. The other thing you'll notice if you look at this young lady's TikTok, which I'm not going to put her name up there. You can just go ahead and Google uh, the name of that article and you can find out who she is. The other thing is, like I said, this girl is married. We don't know what her husband does. She doesn't disclose anything about her lifestyle. That's another reason going with social media is dangerous, is dangerous, okay? Now, the millennials that are quiet quitting, I need y'all to understand, they're not you because you have student loan debt, okay? Because black women on the whole, I love y'all, but let's go ahead and talk about some statistics here. I'm gonna go ahead and move some things over here so we can look at it and I can hold your hand and we can talk about it together. Okay, because you ain't going to be living no damn soft life. The softest your life is going to be is getting a pedicure and having tea with honey in it in the morning. That's as deep as it's going to go for you. Okay, here's why. Now, black women earn 63 cents for every dollar earned by white men. Now, we know in the country, of course, they're obviously the majority, so they have to always compare us to white men. Uh, There's something to be said about that as well, because what about the women? But okay. Um, Now, we say that this is an issue. And the reason that I say that is because, again, you want to go into soft life as a trauma response. Okay, because after you've gone to college, after you have uh, contributed to being the highest degree earners in our country, you still don't make enough money. Your first job that you get out of college doesn't even compare. It's it's at your your annual pay is actually lower than the amount of student loan debt that you actually owe. Okay, so top that with the fact that you're going in earning $0.63 63 to the dollar to your white male counterparts, okay? That's already a problem. You can't sit down. You have to find a way to make more money, sister. 
it is what it is, okay? Let's see, even controlling for education, black women are earning less than white men. So here, um, we also see that these are the men's earnings here. Um, and uh, well, the men's earnings is right here, if you can see it at the top there. So for every dollar, we're talking about how much we make, okay? So with our advanced degrees, we still are only making 69.8 cents to the dollar for every white male counterpart. Now, these are uh, statistics from 2020. You can imagine what they're like for the year 2022, okay? Now, let's see here. Compared with other women, Black women have the highest labor force participation rate. So let's really talk about this, y'all. How is it that we participate the most in the education system, right? We contribute the most to having the highest degrees. We contribute by, um, I don't know if I said it already, but being in the workforce the most, how is it that we're still so far behind? I have another bit of information that I wanna share with you all because I'm tired and I feel like y'all gonna try to come for me for no good reason because you're not looking at the actual statistics here. So let's look at some more information because I think you guys really need to understand why soft life is not for black women. All right. At least not today's modern black woman. You need to get up, you need to get out and you need to rectify the issues that you have. All right. The, the mistakes that you've made. So Let's go ahead. And I'm only going to be on here for an hour. Y'all going to be proud of me. I'm getting up out of here. All right. Now. All right. Let's talk about it. So this talks about the wage gap in the 25 states with the largest number of black women working full time year round. All right. Now we talked about how, again, the average debt that you're coming out of school with is over $41,000 on average. Now it says in Texas, the median wages for black women are $40,222. $40,222. You are still coming out of the gate with more debt than the income you actually stand to make. None of you are going to be able to sit down and pay off your student loan debt in full for, you know, without working for an entire year. It just, the numbers just don't make sense. Now let's go to a higher uh, earning area. Let's look at California. The average wage, it says for black women there is 50,000, let me see, here we go, $50,102. You guys may not know this, but if you look at the area median income, which is the AMI for California, go to LA County. Uh, $50,000 is actually considered low income, bordering very low income. So you could have a $50,000 salary by yourself essentially and not qualify for housing. But if you have two people, uh, meaning section eight, but if you have two people in your household, uh, that 50,000 can actually get you into section eight. Right. So despite the fact that you're considered low income, you're still a little too high to get HUD. But if you have two people in the household, you just might actually qualify. OK, I'm saying this to say there's a problem here. OK, soft life is not for you. Illinois, forty one thousand dollars, one hundred and ninety six. That that. How are you going to do that? New Jersey, $46,016. $46,016 is the median income for Black women. Uh, let's look at New York. Let's see what they have going on. $46,271 is the median income for Black women. I need you, if there are Black women in the chat, to explain to me how it is <laughs> that you are going to live a soft life when you are literally the bottom income makers, income earners in any city, whether it's a small city, a big metropolitan city, how are you going to live a soft life? I have questions. Okay. The other thing is I need us to get out of the group think mentality. There was a reason I shared that definition with you guys. Um, because I, I really feel like for some reason, as Blacks, we do, um, and I don't want to say Blacks, I hate saying it like that, but as in this group, sometimes we just jump on bandwagons without really understanding the consequences of doing so and without looking at the background of things. Like I said, 99% of y'all did not know that soft life is derived from sugar daddy, sugar baby relationships. We already starting off on the wrong foot, okay? Now, I'm not saying that Black women are a monolith 
to by any stretch of the imagination. But we do, again, have some similar traits. Let's talk about independence because that is part of the soft life trope. Again, being off by yourself is going to be way more expensive. You're already the lowest income earners. We, I say we because I am a Black woman. We are some of the lowest wage earners in this country. We're some of the most overworked and the most educated. Something is wrong here. The solution to that is not going to sit down or going to get a manicure. That's not the that's not the solution. We do have a tendency to overdo certain things and jump in too too quickly without really looking at the cost of doing business, so to speak. We're the high, like I said, we're the high, most highly educated, but we're the most in debt, right? We're independent and self-sufficient. However, what that also looks like on the other side is that uh, we tend to be more lonely. We, t- we are the least desirable uh, group of people when it comes to dating. Now that's online, but I also tend to think that it is that way in uh, real life society as well. So again, soft life is not really something that you want to do. I don't think that you want to pull yourself out and ostracize yourself from society because there's way too many factors working against us that are going to end up being detrimental to your financial future, okay? A lot of you are going to run up debt. A lot of you have run up debt. Like I said, people that I would have never thought had issues with debt, they're facing lawsuits from collection agencies, okay? Um, maybe you have you wear wigs. Wigs cost money. How are you going to be soft life in a wig that you got to pay $1,400 for every month to get freshened up or get, you know, buy new ones? How are you going to do that? How are you going to pay for your makeup if you're soft life in it? How are you going to do that? Right. You're not going to be able to. Now, um, uh, we're very hardworking. However, we also have a tendency to work backwards in a lot of ways. Uh, Our lives are structured to where we can't really sit down because of of the hard work we actually put in. Um, Now, the other thing is that with the tendency to work backwards, what I'm talking about is this is going to be a sore subject and it's going to touch a lot of y'all probably in the wrong way. But we tend to be the most um, the most willing to be single mothers. That's a problem because now you're actually having to divvy up your income. Um, it costs like 500 bucks a week to take care of a kid. So multiply that by 18. And then a lot of you are not even telling your children to leave when they're of legal age or when they actually are gainfully employed. Okay. I can do a whole nother live about why I don't really agree with people staying home, um, but I can tell you why now. The, the main reason is because the kids that stay home are not typically the ones that save for homes and they're not investing. They're not doing anything like that, okay? Um, so that's a problem. Now, uh, like I said, we take out debt because of a lot of our decisions, you know, being a single mom, uh, ch- child care, all that kind of stuff. A lot of our money is going to really... I don't want to say ridiculous places, but because we're choosing to stay alone so much and pull ourselves out of certain parts of society um, or not, how should I say it? Because we're not participating in some norms in society, we are actually pushing the soft life even further away. Okay, so like I said, it ends up being a stress and a trauma response. Um, The other thing is we tend to go into sexual liberation full force, right? We want to be free with our bodies. We don't want to really think about who we're sleeping with. We kind of just want to have a good time. Again, that's another trauma response that also, you know, results in issues. We'll just say issues uh, and crumb snatchers. Okay, Uh, so that that could be an issue. Uh, The other problem with us, I think, is that we value image over substance. I'm not going to really dive into that because that's really been what this entire uh, live stream has been about. Um, So really what I'm talking about here is that because of the structure of the average Black woman in America, soft life is just not possible for you, sis. It's not. All is not lost. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to talk about, uh, let's see. I was going to try to give y'all some cost of living stuff, but we ain't even going to go there. But all is not in vain. Okay, I'm about to hop up off of here. I just wanted to come and talk about this and kind of shoot from the hip. Uh, So forgive me if I ruffled any feathers. But there is an article here that kind of talks about some of the aspects of soft life that I think are acceptable, but I can also find a flaw in each one of these. So we're going to go ahead and do that before we take off. Okay, Um, once again. Uh, You can go ahead and book a call with me at mycreditcall.com. Shameless plug, okay? All right. So pretty sure you you guys can see this pretty well. 
All right. So this is a website called Nicole or Nicole, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, anyway, she talks about how she loves the black or the uh, soft life aesthetic. She loves seeing black women and femmes indulge in rest and find new ways to treat themselves to nice things. OK, well, we have a lot of debt, so I'm not sure that we should be doing that. Um, she says, it isn't lost on me that some components of this lifestyle require access to resources that are hard to come by. What have we been talking about this entire hour? Unfortunately, life is not always as easy and carefree. She says, you won't always have the funds to take a trip on short notice, visit the spa weekly, or pay someone to clean your home. However, most people that do this kind of thing are housewives. They're people that have more than one income in the home. Now, if you are the one lawyer or doctor or whatever in your friend's group that does this and has a maid, we're not talking about you. We're talking about the majority of people, Black women specifically, that are in debt that we've been talking about this entire hour, okay? While soft life might seem like a pipe dream for some, it's important to remember that we all have different definitions of what a soft life looks like. For some people, simply being able to experience leisure and enjoy simple pleasures in life is enough. For others, the soft life means luxury. Now, here's the issue. I've already told you guys, there's too much uh, wiggle room here and soft life is being left too open to interpretation. That is why you are doing it wrong, okay? And you think it's for you, but it's not. So let's talk about scheduling me time. Now, I think that that's okay because you should have some me time where you can nurture yourself and just be, oh, just take a breath, right? But again, again, how are we doing it? Are we staying in bed all day? Are we eating a tub of Ben and Jerry's when we feel depressed? How are we taking our actual me time? A lot of you, instead of going to the spa, you need to be booking a consultation with somebody like a therapist. You need probably even a, um, what are they doing now? Like sub, a subconscious life coach. You probably need that. But instead, you're going to go to the spa and have somebody rub you down, right? That's what we're going to do. Okay, um, let's see, what else do we have here? Cultivate new beliefs about rest. Okay, this one sounds okay, but based on the fact that there's gonna be a whole lot of new positions that are gonna become available, um, aside from the ones eliminated by automation, I don't technically agree with this no working past 6 p.m. I have, a, I, I, this is how I feel about that. If you are working or if you have debt, outstanding debts, by the way, revolving debt, anything other than let's just say a mortgage or something basic like that, you can afford to not work past 6 p.m. It's 7.43 right now. Um, or what time? I don't even know. Well, what time is it? It's something 43 where I am. I cannot afford to not work. I can't. OK, um, no working on weekends and holidays, please. That's prime time to get double, triple, whatever pay. You tripping. You need to be doing that because you're in debt. OK, you're the lowest earners in society right now. OK. You only earn 63 cents to the dollar of your white counterparts. OK, you need to be working some weekends and holidays. Take three breaks during the work day. OK, you get two 15s and a lunch break. What more is she talking about here? So this is what I'm saying. The way that it's being structured to y'all is just ridiculous. We got six more minutes. We about to count down right now, y'all. I'm about to be out of here. If you don't have to struggle, don't. Struggling doesn't mean that it uh, doesn't always make the journey worthwhile or the destination meaningful. You don't have to struggle to have an empowering, relatable, or inspirational story. Okay, cool. I, I get it. I hear what you're saying. Oh, hang on, y'all. Google is listening. Ooh, y'all. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. I get that. But what we're talking about here is if you don't have to struggle, don't. We talked about some of the decisions that y'all make very early in your life. Linking up with the wrong person, having kids with the wrong person, having kids with a guy that isn't going to be there, taking on a job that you know is not uh, conducive to your uh, career success, dead end jobs. We do that a lot. Um, you know, taking on jobs where you're not going to be able to see your kids or your family. These are things that you have already done in the beginning and the front end of your life. You front loaded your life with a lot of trauma and a lot of stress. And now you just want to back away from it and just not address it. Okay. You're going to have to struggle until you get to where 
um, you can actually sit down somewhere and take some time. I'm sorry. In this live stream, we're talking about the fact that you need to work, okay? You really haven't earned your rest. You haven't earned your leisure, as they say. You haven't. Let people help you. This I agree with, okay? Another reason why we do at mycreditcall.com, because you need people to help you. Yes, you do. Going to soft life is not the solution. You need therapy. You need to talk to a financial specialist. You need to talk to a credit score a representative such as myself. You need to call me. You need to talk about why, where your money's going. You need to talk about how to uh, you know, divvy up some of your money to get to where you can pay off your bills, okay? So that's the kind of help that you need. Speak to yourself kindly. This is the one that I completely agree with. What we talked about before, a lot of us tend to overinflate our capabilities because we have a very skewed self-perception. A lot of this happens because we have the degrees because we are the breadwinners in our homes. However, being the breadwinner in the lowest income producing demographic is not really something to have a big head about. Having a master's or a doctorate, yet having over $100,000 in student loan debt, waiting for Joe Biden to give you permission to have it written off is not a flex not a flex. Okay. Now I don't want you to beat yourself up about it, but I also want you to have honest conversations with yourself about this. Okay. We're not going to call ourselves stupid. We're just going to say that maybe we could have made some better decisions. And now we need to go ahead and talk to somebody to get it squared away. Right. Stop trying to be humble. Wait a minute now. This is where we get mixed up. We're getting mixed signals here because we're supposed to speak to ourselves kindly, but we're also not, we're also supposed to say uh, to not be humble. And this goes into that inflated sense of self that I talked about, because we are more focused on image, right? We're focused on a lot of you even want to do soft life. Let's be real. A lot of soft life is y'all literally want to say, oh, look at me. I have a degree. I have fancy, I have fancy car. I have nice purses. I have a nice wig. I have makeup. I'm always put together. On top of that, I get to sit down and do nothing. Yeah, you want to flex like that. That's 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 a lot of what soft life is. It's it's you want to make it look as though everything you have costs nothing. But the things that you have or the things that you want to obtain are going to require work. The but again, the staying humble, try not to stay humble. I don't agree with this one. OK, this we could talk about body positivity and all kind of crazy stuff, OK, because we we are leading the, the country in obesity as well. And OK, I'm not the smallest thing, but at least I can understand what was what, where I'm falling short here. OK, I'm not going to tell you, you know, big, big bodies are beautiful. I, well, that's debatable. OK, um, so I think that having a healthy dose of humility will actually help you um, in your journey towards the soft life if that is something that you want to do, okay? Because again, the things you're flexing about are not really flexes. When I see or hear a woman say, I have a master's, I have a doctorate, because I am a credit solutionist, in my head, I hear, oh, she has a shitload of debt. That's what I hear when you say that. When I hear somebody say, oh, I have an apartment in downtown such and such, I hear, oh, that lady doesn't know how to divvy up her money. Like she's probably spending way too much on rent where she could move 10 miles that way, 10 miles east, north, south, east, or west, and she could be saving a ton of money and have a house in a year, right? That's what I hear when I, when I hear these flexes. I only eat this and that. Okay, cool. But I also hear, okay, Again, lowest income producing demographic. I mean, all right. Focus on what you can control. This one I agree with. However, uh, like I said, I do think that uh, soft life and retreating from life is a stress response that we need to work on. Stop trying to be the hero. I agree with this as well. However, not being the hero does not mean disappearing from people's lives with no explanation. Now you're creating even more trauma in uh, what could be your support system. I think in this case, well, we talked about it at the beginning, so I'm not even going to get too deep into that. Prioritize joy. I agree with that. Whatever your joy is, it is. Uh, subjective. So I'm not going to tell you what your joy should be. Don't think it should be drugs or alcohol, but live your life, sis. Do what you do. Accept that you are worthy and deserving. 
I agree with that. Okay. Um, now, anyway, I think that I beat you guys over the head enough with this and I'm not really going to go too deep into anything else here. Um, but look up the cost of living, look up the statistics about black women and whether or not we really can't afford to be alone out here. So I hope that this has been beneficial to you and helpful. I hope I didn't come too harsh, come across too harsh. I'll say this and I'll be done. Think about feminism. That was not our fight y'all. And we jumped on it and look at us now, okay? Because the ones that initiated that whole thing and that independent woman thing, the same ones that promoted that to us, where do you think they're, they are now? They're sitting in the house, in houses, in the suburbs under their husbands. That's where they are now. And you're the one out here. But an average income of like $40,000, average student loan debt by itself of $41,000, on top of your lifestyle debt. I am your credit solutionist. I hope you found this beneficial. You want to book a call to talk to me and get the real deal? MyCreditCall.com.